Quick little warning, I've been super busy this week and I hadn't had enough time to actually go through and caption the video in the video. So for this one, if you want to turn on the captions in YouTube itself, I will go through and caption it properly once I get the chance to. Um, so yeah, no caption in the video for this one, but if you're watching my channel for the first time, usually there are. So apologies and enjoy the video. Oh, also, quick little trigger warning, because this script is super intense, so goes into, like, lots of gory stuff. So if that's not your thing, feel free to click off. Sorry I hit my mic there. <laughs> um, but yeah, if it's not your thing, I completely understand. Click off now. Um, yeah, and thank you so much for watching. I am a greedy man. A selfish man. A monster. A wolf hidden within the tattered remains of a dead lamb's skin and wool. And yes, I murdered it before wearing its face to fit in with the others while I hunted them down from within their own flock. You are my first and only love. You see, in a world of noise and audio feedback, you live in a world of silence. The idea of being able to speak my darkest desires to you. Prattling on about how the light in my last victim's eyes slowly faded away it makes me hearted in ways that before I could only dream about. Confessing to you the many ways in which I could carve and dismantle a body much like a hunter would a deer and have you smile at me with that innocent look of love and adoration on your face. It would be a divine pleasure that so few of my kind would ever know about. I doubt that any other serial killer has their own love that they can confess to honestly and never be judged by. Whenever your back is to me, I yearn to speak the dirtiest of tongues and have you and the wiser. I fucking love it. It is a risky move, I know that. But a small bit of gaslighting and I'm sure I can redirect the incident and talk my way out of it. You are facing away from me. I could take this opportunity right now. I'm ready to twist what you heard against you, should it go down like that. Only, it doesn't. I met the woman who went missing last week. I got out her tongue while she was still alive. I strangled her with her own stockings until she couldn't fight anymore. Then I stabbed her until she was drowning on her own blood. Her body is in the woods behind the university. I still have the tongue. Do you want to see it? I watch you closely. My eyes watching for a hitched breath. A gasp of surprise. A twitch. Something. Anything. That would show me that you heard me. I know you are deaf. But just how deaf? I still can't help but question it. I've slowly been raising my voice while your back is turned over the past two weeks to see. I couldn't help myself. The paranoia was eating away at me that you were a trick to get me to expose myself as the Harlequin serial killer. They gave me that name because I left my handprint in their own blood across their mouth and face. You turned to me. And you see me watching you. You smile a beautiful smile and I can't help but smile back. The realization that you truly cannot hear me at all sets off the fireworks in my chest. My heart pounds as I feel the giddiness take over. You're mine. You're mine. You're mine! Everyone has a soulmate, two halves of a whole. And when your soulmate is as powerful as I am, I swear that you won't ever face darkness. I won't allow any shadow to touch you or come near you. Your innocence and beauty will be protected by me forever. I want to be the thing that shields you from this cruel world. You see, my love, I believe that evil is a tangible thing. It exists like with wavelengths, just as sound and light. And just as you cannot hear those sound waves, the evil of this world hasn't touched you. You are immaculate, pristine, clean. The world is made up of two classes, predator and prey. I am predator. And all of the world's prey. 
Even you, my darling, are prey. You are in so much danger without me, and I cannot fathom that thought. There are so many insidious people out there. They are like me. Something that horror stories are made out of, but I will protect you. I will keep you safe. With a predator like me near you, no other monster would dare come near you. Instinct is no match for reason. And just like other humans, reason could be my downfall or my rise. I reason that confessing my darkest deeds to you now and in the future while your back is turned will give me the release I need. And keep me sharp. A sharp blade ready to cut into the flesh of my next victim. It'll help me keep a wise and calm mind that will keep my plans and myself several steps ahead of the authorities. My sweet love, my sweet deaf love, you are perfect for me, and I am perfect for you. You are mine, you are unsullied and unmad, so untouched by the filth that taints the world and all the people around us, and they are all tainted by it. Like your last boyfriend, I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop hurting him. He was too close to you. I didn't like that. I had to remove him from the equation in order to make sure your eyes and heart saw only me when I finally made myself known. It makes the bile rise in my throat. The thought of him near you, able to touch you. You were mine then and mine now. Only mine, and never anyone else's. He should have known better than to touch something that belongs to me. He had to suffer, and I enjoyed taking my time. Cutting him from stern to groin, while he screamed gibberish and begged for his life, even as his intestines fell to the floor. A human's denial, despite clearly being game over as a powerful thing. I kept him alive much longer than many of my other kills. I hung him from the ceiling, skinning him partially and even using my teeth at one point, leaving bite marks across his flesh that I didn't even remember leaving. I think the rage simmered too close to the surface, and I couldn't contain myself. He tasted foul. I know if I tasted your blood, it would taste sweet. A divine ambrosia that hums through your veins and calls out to the darkness and others. You attract these vile beasts, and now that I've found you, now that you're mine, I won't allow another predator to devour you. To ruin you. For as long as I live, I won't let anyone hurt you. You have to remain clean. Unspoiled. I embrace you and tuck your head under my chin. If you dare run away or break us, I will have to find you and teach you that you can't ever leave me. I don't want to do that. Don't ever make me do that. I will never let you leave. You are mine now. I'll never let another human being get near you. I'll never let them hurt you. I'll be everything you need. I won't let anything hurt you. Not even yourself. You are safest with me. I won't let you go. I won't let you run. I will keep you beside me at all costs. You are so precious. You look up at me questioningly, innocently. I smile at you and step back so that you can read my lips. I love you. You give me that little smile again. It is beautiful. You are beautiful. You make the rotting carapace of my heart beat painfully in my chest, my sweet little love. My poor sweet little love. So unaware of the darkness that whispered so close to you. It is the first time that I have said, I love you. And I can feel your breath quicken as your eyes widen briefly as it sinks in. You are an open book, a clean, innocent open book. 
It stirs something in me knowing that I can practically read your thoughts as they splay across your face in real time as you come to realize what I've said. For you, this is the beginning of a new chapter in the story of us, our love story. I am too intoxicated on the drug of you. I want you. To keep you. To own you. To possess you. And I intend to do just that.